Hello and welcome back everybody. In this part 14 of our series, we are going to leverage the awesome layering functionality of the V-Ray VFB, which will allow us to color correct our sofa, our Monstera plant and our plant wall from right inside the V-Ray VFB without ever having to open a post-production software. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go under the V-Ray menu and you're going to want to bring up the Render Elements Manager, okay? So in here, uh, you can add all the different kinds of render elements uh, to be rendered along with your RGB color beauty image. Now, we're not going to dive deep into them there for more, typically for your more intermediate techniques, uh, but instead, we're just going to focus on adding this crypto mat render element into the list of active um, render elements here. We're just going to drag and drop it in here. Uh, it resides under the mat category, just in case you have all of these uh, sort of um, collapsed like that. But all you have to do is by and large, just drag it into the render element active list here and make sure that it's toggled to on. Now the crypto mat does have some settings that you can play around with, uh, but you really don't have to. So you can just leave, you can leave things at their default and just close the render elements manager. And now what you ought to do is you ought to restart your render. So if you're using the interactive render, restart that. If you're doing a final render, then just uh, have it render again. Okay. All right. So now uh, if we uh, just want to mask things out here, uh, what we can do is uh, we can, well, first off, we're going to bring in a new layer. So we're going to bring in, for example, the hue and saturation layer. Okay. And uh, we're going to focus on the sofa. With this hue and saturation layer, if I play with the hue now and with the saturation, you can see that it affects the entire image, right? Which is not what we want. Instead, we want to set up a masking system. So, or a mask not necessarily a system, just a mask. So to set up a mask, you want to click on this little button in here and you're going to be able to see that you can choose between having multi matte masks, integer masks, and crypto matte masks. We've set up a crypto matte render element. So we're going to go with crypto matte mask. Okay. Now that we've done that, uh, you can see right here, we're not no longer under our layer properties, but we're under our crypto matte mask properties. In here, what we can do is we can just start picking by clicking on this little pick button here. We can start picking in our image here what we want to adjust. So now I've clicked on my sofa here and we've essentially masked it out. If I click the show preview when selected button here, you can see how my mask looks like. All right. And so just by doing that, I've successfully uh, masked this a hue and saturation layer to only include the sofa. And now if I go under its properties here and play with the, well, let's see, with the hue and with the saturation, right? You can see how that affects that. <laughs> so for the sofa, I think we could go with a saturation value of, I guess, 0 0.1. If we toggle this layer to off and back on, you can see we're just adding a little bit of uh, that adjustment to it, okay? just adjusting the saturation a little bit. Now, uh, if we bring in, for example, another layer, if we bring in, let's bring in a color balance layer, okay? Now, um, if we wanted to color balance this Monstera plant here, well, we can very easily do that as well. So again, we're gonna add another crypto mat mask. Uh, we're gonna uh, go with the pick functionality and we're just gonna click on the uh, Monstera plant here. Okay, we're going to click on the show preview when selected button as well, just to confirm that this is the correct, uh, well, th that we're masking the right thing, right? And with that done, well, uh, we can now go back into our layers properties and we can, for example, up the green colors or lower the blues and such, right? And I think for this one, I don't know, maybe if we just up the greens a little bit, sort of like that. I think that looks just a little bit more visually pleasing, I guess, although your opinion may vary. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> but I think I just wanted to emphasize the green colors just a little bit more. There we go. I think I kind of like how that's looking. And now uh, let's, why not continue on? What if we wanted to adjust the uh, plant wall here? 
Okay, what if we wanted to color correct it a little bit? Well, again, I'm just going to bring in another layer, and um, why, why, why not just bring another hue and saturation layer, right? And again, going to add a mask. And what can we do here? Well, uh, we're going to, again, pick things. And I'm just going to pick a couple of elements here, and I'm going to click the Show Preview when selected. And as you can see, what's happening now is, well, we're basically selecting individual plants on that plant wall. And in this particular situation, that's just how we're going to have to mask things out here, all right, without diving into some of the more advanced techniques. But it's going to be done real quickly. You can just click on all of these right here, as you can see, and then maybe uh, hop back into the Show Preview when selected sort of a view that you kind of try to get all of them or you make sure that you're getting all of them right so kind of like this there we go and this plant as well and that one as well and this one as well i think by and large that's it now if i click on this one i think i'm selecting the wall indeed and if you select something that you don't want selected obviously what you can do is you can just unpick it using the minus pick functionality here and just click on the wall or alternatively, you can also just select that um, actual object in here and hit the little minus button. That's also going to remove it. Okay. Okay. So with that done, how about we uh, tweak the saturation on this plant wall a little bit, make it just a little bit more saturated and maybe change the hue so that we get a bit more of those green colors in here. So maybe if we set it to 20 or so, and there we go. The before and the after on that wall, the before and after on that Monstera plant, right? And the before and after on that sofa. All right. Well, hello, Nate's from the future here. And we've made just a very small sort of tiny mistake. We haven't really included all of the plants on this uh, plant wall here into our mask. And this also kind of um, inadvertently demonstrates just how powerful this system is. You can always go back into your crypto mat, right, uh, to mask things out, and you can just uh, hit the pick and continue picking stuff out, right, if you so want to. If you pick something that you don't want to, unpick it, right? But this just goes to show you uh, just how uh, versatile the system can be, and you can do all that from right inside the VFB, which is, you know, just another plus. All right, and with that, we're concluding this one. Thank you for your attention. We hope you've learned just how powerful the VFB can be. And if you're interested in how you can export masks out of V-Ray, uh, well, we'll leave a link somewhere around here to the slightly more advanced tutorial you can check out, okay? But again, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.